Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Nursing Basics. In this video, you're going to learn about atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. And if you notice, both of those affect the upper chambers of the heart, the atria. So let's do this. So if you guys have been keeping up with this channel, awesome. If not, check out all the links to the videos down below in the description. But for now, let's get started. We're gonna start with atrial fibrillation. So what exactly is it? Atrial fibrillation, AKA AFib, is a rhythm that affects the upper chambers of the heart, the atria. Essentially, these bad boys are fibrillating or kind of quivering, that's how I remember it, in a way that is not effective, so they're not getting blood down to the ventricles as effectively as they can. And that's because there's an action potential somewhere in here that's firing super fast in a way that isn't normal. And that, my friends, is what is causing the atria to not work effectively. So with that being said, let's talk about what it looks like on an ECG or EKG. So on an EKG strip, atrial fibrillation, if you can see, will not have P waves. And that's because of the crazy activity that's occurring in the atria. Another important thing to remember about AFib is that since there are no P waves, there is no PR interval. Now, if you remember how the heart beats, you will know that the atrial contraction is followed by ventricular contraction. During AFib, this is crazy, this is kind of cool. The atrial rate can be anywhere from 400 to 600 beats per minute, which is nuts. So another important thing to consider about AFib is how it affects the ventricles. We know there's no P wave and there's no PR interval. So how does this affect the QRS complex? Well, it really doesn't affect the QRS complex. In fact, the QRS complex shape will be normal and short in duration as it normally is. The only difference is that the QRS complex will not occur at regular intervals. The reason the QRS complexes are not occurring at regular intervals is because of the AV node. So if you remember when we talked about the electrical conduction system of the heart, the AV node is what is known as the gatekeeper. That is the node that decides which electrical impulses pass through and which ones do not. So during atrial fibrillation, action potentials from the atria that try to make their way down to the ventricles pass through to the AV node. But if you remember, these atria are beating at like four to 600 beats per minute. So if all of those went through to the ventricles and the ventricles were beating at that speed, it would not be good. And that's what the AV node is doing. It's only letting certain electrical impulses through down to the ventricles. And that's why you have QRS complexes that are not equidistant from each other. I'm gonna put up a little strip of atrial fibrillation so you can see. Another way to look at this on an ECG strip is looking at the R to R interval. If atrial fibrillation is present, the R to R interval will not be equidistant from each other on an ECG strip. So the ventricular rhythm will be variable and not regular. Regular, remember, means that the QRS complex or the R to R interval is happening equidistant from each other. So the distance from one R to the next R is the same exact all the way throughout. That's not happening during atrial fibrillation. So just because there's an irregular rhythm does not mean that the ventricles are not functioning properly. In fact, they're functioning just fine, just not at regular time intervals, and they're pumping blood throughout the rest of the body. And finally, what about the QT interval during atrial fibrillation? There isn't one! So to summarize atrial fibrillation, let's start with the rate. The atrial rate can be anywhere from four to 600 beats per minute, which is nuts and the ventricular rate is variable. The rhythm, the rhythm is irregular. P waves, they are not present. If there are no P waves present, that means there is no PR interval. The QRS complex, they'll be short in duration and they'll be normal in shape, but will be irregular. And then finally, the QT interval, there is none. All right, I know that's a lot of information to digest for AFib. Go ahead and take a break if you need to. We're gonna go ahead and talk about atrial flutter. So during atrial flutter, also known as A flutter or just flutter, there's what is known as a re-entry mechanism or circuit. And just in case you weren't aware, this is happening in the atria. So this circuit or mechanism in the atria 
is a repeated cycle that causes these atria to beat at a rate of 250 to 400 beats per minute. Thankfully, the ventricles don't beat at a rate like this because of the AV node. You got it, you know your stuff. Remember, the AV node only lets a certain amount of electrical impulses through. So typically during atrial flutter, the atria are going at 250 to 400 beats per minute and the ventricles are usually anywhere from 60 to 150 beats per minute. So let's move on to what this looks like on an E. ECG or EKG, I'm gonna pop it up on the screen for you. Let's first talk about P waves. So on an EKG, you will notice what looks like a sawtooth pattern. So from what I learned, these are P waves. These are also called F waves or flutter waves. And if you remember, these can occur at a rate of anywhere from 250 to 400 beats per minute. But if you kind of notice, there's P waves or F waves, whatever you want to call them. So how does this affect the PR interval? Well, you kind of can't really measure it. However, what you can do is measure the degree of AV block by counting the ratio of P wave to QRS complexes. So let's take a look. In this example, you have three P waves for every one QRS complex. Therefore, this is a three to one ratio because you have three P waves for every one QRS complex. So we learned that you can count the P waves or F waves, whatever you wanna call them, and you can't really measure the PR interval. So how does this affect the QRS complex? Well. During atrial flutter, the QRS complex is pretty normal and unaffected. It should be short in duration, normal shape, and should be within normal time thresholds. Finally, the QT interval, there isn't one. So to summarize atrial flutter, the rate, the atria can be at a rate of anywhere from 250 to 400 beats per minute. The ventricles are typically going anywhere from 60 to 150 beats per minute. The rhythm, it's usually regular, but it may vary according to the degree of AV block. P wave, these P waves will look like sawtooth patterns on an ECG. They're also known as F waves, flutter waves, whatever you wanna call them. And as we learned, they can go anywhere from 250 to 400 beats per minute. And then the PR interval, there isn't one. But what you can do is count the ratio of P waves or F waves to the QRS complex. So you could have three to one, four to one, two to one. And the QT interval, there isn't one. Well, there you go, peeps, that's it. We just covered atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter, kind of just the basics of it. I hope it helps out. Make sure you check out the Quizlet. I will post a Quizlet down below. It will have lots of information on there, everything that was included in this video and more. That way you can test your comprehension over this material. Hey, you. Don't forget to stay awesome. Also, don't forget the basics. Be kind and do good. Peace out, guys. Bye.